What's going on, ghosties? We are Tales of Spooky Coffee House. Welcome back to our podcast. If you're new here, thanks for joining us. I'm Chelsea. And I'm Veronica. Why are you so quiet? What do you You mean? sounded like, and I'm Veronica. Like, you're innocent. I am. (laughs) Or not. On today's episode, we're going to be talking about the Bunny Man Bridge and the haunting tale of Emily's Bridge. We got a thing with bridges today, ghosties. Mm-hmm. We are also going to pull the tarot cards of the week. But before we get started with our regular segments, let's have our coffee break to get us pumped up. Veronica, yes. how are you? I'm good. How about that eclipse, huh? I <laughs> saw this thing where it was like watching the eclipse is like being with a man all that hype for four minutes. Oh. <laughs> where are the lies? <laughs> Also, to all the men that watch or listen to this, um, I'm sorry. We love you. You make it hard, but we, 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 you know, we try. I could have said so many things about that sentence. Anyways, so how was the eclipse oh. for you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, there are two kinds of people. Um... It was good. I was at work, but, um, Same. and my boss came back from vacation, so he was in, like, a good mood. It was pretty annoying. Yep. But he allowed my coworker, Vanessa, and I, and Joanna to go out and look at the eclipse. We were giving out free glasses mm-hmm. for the eclipse, so we were able to look at it, and it looks pretty cool. It was cool witnessing it. And then I realized, um, I, you know, I had a flashback. I don't know if you remember this. But I had a flashback to when we were in in elementary school and we had an eclipse and the teachers led us outside and we had the the glasses or telescope or something. They were allowing us to like look. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that? I don't. I was like, holy sh... No, No, I I was just like, I forgot about this memory. You know Um, what I remember though? In mm -hmm. first grade, because I remember which teacher I had. Where we went outside and we, like, drew chalk people. Like, we outlined our bodies on the ground like a crime scene. Um, And then we went out, like, hours later to try and realign ourselves with it. But because of the shadows of the sun, yeah, yeah. yeah, we couldn't. And it was, like, a learning thing. Yeah. I I never did that. But I remember when you guys did that. Isn't that crazy? Like, I was never in a class where we did that. But I thought that was so cool. Mm -hmm. That you guys were, like, doing that to, like, learn about shadows and stuff. Um, Oh, I was so jealous. I was like, why am I getting these lame classes and they're getting all these experiences? Like, what's going on? (laughs) But the cool thing about the eclipse, though, is that at work right after... I had gone to break right after the eclipse happened. Mm -hmm. But when I came back in, um, half of the lights were off. Apparently, there was a... um, What do you call it when the lights go out? A blackout? A blackout. We had a blackout, which I thought was funny. Um, had I been there, you know, if I was right. inside, I would have been like, "Oh my god, the world is ending." <laughs> Speaking of, I we found this thing online where it was like it would be really funny if somebody during the solar eclipse just released like a hundred blow up dolls that were filled with helium, so people thought it was the rapture. And I lost my shit. My mom and her boyfriend and I were all sitting at the table talking about different ways that we could get away with doing that. And it was really fun. But could you imagine? You know, I'm kind of <laughs> I'm kind of upset and disappointed that no one came up with a prank. Especially it being April, you know? Like right. Well, first of all, uh, that that would have been illegal anyway, so, like, I get it. <laughs> to pull a prank of some sort? No, 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 no. Like, on, no, like, no, no, what no, you the, end up the doing. helium blow-up dolls. Because okay. releasing balloons is illegal. I, did you know that? Not if it's an accident. Yeah, but that would not Wait, be an accident. <laughs> is it illegal only in your seat or everywhere? Because... Everywhere, because it messes with flight uh, airspace. I was, when I was at the cemetery, um... I uh, I saw a family release like white balloons. Yeah, that's illegal. And no. Huh. Also, what percent? So glad it wasn't what us. What percent of the solar eclipse did you guys get? Um, 
it it was like uh i want to say like 65 70 percent okay it was pretty cool this the um when i was looking at it 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 covered a good amount Mm -hmm. um of the sun it was fun it was fun we got about like 97 Uh percent out here but if i wanted to drive to indianapolis we could have gotten a hundred percent but i had to work because i'm broke so you didn't get to experience like any part of it like you didn't notice the outside go dark or anything at 97 percent totality yeah i should have oh okay wow (laughs) i just said 97 percent you've changed since the eclipse you've changed changed. actually did you know that leos are heavily affected by solar eclipses because our ruling planet is the sun interesting yeah so it's probably why i wonder what's gonna happen at capricorns when saturn loses its rings are we gonna lose our uh, sanity or like um don't you already pretty much have that issue since you already pretty much <laughs> have that issue. Anyways. <laughs> Do you watch any anime? Y- yes. Okay, so I never watched anime. I was not a fan. I didn't care for it. It was just like, whatever. Some people like that stuff. That's just not me, I right? like certain ones. Certain yeah. ones? Okay, yeah. so I... Um, have a coworker who told me to start watching Demon Slayer. Hmm. I've heard good and things it about took that. Me s- yeah, I, well, it took me a minute. It took me a minute to start watching this. It was excuse after excuse. But I finally started watching it, and now I'm on season two. And tell me why, like, I'm three episodes in of season two, and literally this is like a, an hour ago, I was fucking crying my ass off. <laughs> Oh my god, what would I do? You know, like, I was just, I was a mess. You big baby. Watching a cartoon, bro. Uh, I was no, like, careful, nah. careful, careful, because some people will argue with you that anime is not cartoon. Cartoon what? is like Tom Mer- and Jerry. Uh-huh. Anime is not. <laughs> so just, no, be careful. I don't want people to come yell at us, okay? I yell at us. Yell at me. I don't care. Um, I don't. I tell me. Tell me about it. I'm curious. There you You're go. You're curious. Well, first of all, cartoons to, is made for know, children like, and there's... anime is made for adults. That's the big difference. First of all. Okay, so what defines a cartoon? It's made for kids. Specifically. Yes. Like, did you know My Little Pony was actually not made for children? Shut the fuck up. What was it made for? Technically, My Little Pony is an anime and it was made for adult men in their 40s. That's disturbing. (laughs) That's really disturbing. Okay, so this says the meaning of cartoon is a preparatory design, drawing, or painting. That's all it says, man. But if you disagree... And you have a different meaning for cartoon, that's fine. I get it. It's okay. You don't have to explain yourself to me. But if you do want to, I'm, I'm interested. Not us debating I'm... cartoons versus anime on a spooky podcast. I know. I just wanted to talk about <laughs> Demon Slayer. I didn't want to argue. Like, damn. I didn't say argue. I said debate. <sighs> okay. Do you want me to put you into the next topic? <laughs> Because I thought you were just going to be like, anyway, moving on. No, I have nothing else to talk about. Okay, so I'll say it. Anyway, so moving on, Veronica, do you want to get us started on the true crime topic of the week? Yeah. Yeah. Um, (laughs) yeah, Yeah. sure. So, I was live the other day on our TikTok page. If you don't already follow us there, please go follow us. It's Tales of Spooky Coffee House. Oh, (laughs) speaking of our pages also guys our facebook page is back so go like that too anyways (laughs) um (laughs) so while i was on live uh, my buddy deandre showed up and i was just kind of asking them like you know hey do y'all have any suggestions for topics that you know we could talk about anything true crime anything paranormal and he mentioned the Bunny Man Bridge right away, right away. 
the title itself caught my attention. I said, yes, sir, let me look into that. Let me Google that right now. I Googled it, and I read a little bit about it. It was quite fascinating. <laughs> so I wanted to share it with you guys. And I particularly like this one just because I love... You know, like Beetlejuice, you have to say Beetlejuice three times to summon him, mm -hmm. or like Bloody Mary, you say it three times. Like, I don't know why, but I, I kind of like that stuff. Okay? You like to summon demons? And... Yes. <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> no wonder why you like Demon Slayer. Anyways. <laughs> Tanjiro's pretty cute, I'm just saying. Okay, so in the quiet town of Clifton, Virginia, there lived a mysterious figure known only as the Bunny Man. Ah, oh, so scary sounding. <laughs> um, <laughs> Legend has it that he roamed the woods surrounding an old bridge, terrorizing anyone who dared to cross his path. The story began decades ago when a group of patients escaped from a nearby asylum, leaving chaos and fear in their wake. Among them was a man wearing a bunny costume, his face obscured by a mask of madness. As the days turned into nights, the bunny man's presence became more ominous, his legend spreading like wildfire... Flyer? <laughs> Wow. <laughs> you said it with such confidence, too. <laughs> You're a bitch. I love you. <laughs> oh my god, like wildfire through the town. <laughs> I don't want to read anymore. Um, Some claimed to have seen him lurking in the shadows, his eyes glowing with an otherworldly light. This is hard. This is really hard for me right now. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you know, I'm sorry. Us laughing is I'll, making this I'll, like I'll not make it scary easier at next all. Time. <laughs> I'm dead. Okay. But it wasn't just his appearance that struck fear into the hearts of the townsfolk. It was the grisly acts of violence attributed to him tales of missing children and slaughtered oh my god i cannot and slaughtered animals that sent shivers down the spine of even the bravest souls i could never do this as a career um <laughs> despite numerous attempts to capture the bunny man he remains elusive his true identity and motive shrouded in mystery some believed him to be a vengeful spirit seeking retribution for past wrongs, while others saw him as nothing more than a figment of fevered imaginations. To this day, the legend of the bunny man lives on, a chilling reminder of the darkness that lurks within us all. <laughs> yes, I do. And though the old bridge still stands, casting its long shadow over time, one can't help but wonder if the bunny man still watches from the depths of the forest, his presence forever a haunting echo. And how, if you're wondering, how can I meet the bunny man? Well, you go to the bridge, ladies and gentlemen. You call out his name from under the bridge three times, and he shall appear. That was not scary at all with our laughing <laughs> or like it kind of made sense though. Like it kind of made sense. Listen, we are not serious people. Okay. <laughs> no, we can be, but no, yeah. <laughs> definitely yeah. wasn't happening today. No, but go ahead and talk to us about your bridge. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so ghosties, we're going to be talking about the haunting tale of Emily's bridge Emily's Bridge is a pretty sad story, which is why I kind of wrote my notes as a story. Um, also because we're called Tales of Spooky Coffee House, so, you know, it fits. It only makes sense. Yeah, it only makes sense. And I really love, because we had talked about, I think in season one, about how much you loved, like, how I told stories. Mm -hmm. And so instead of trying to do that, like, on the spot, I kind of wrote like, I wrote it as a story to, like, help with it. So, we'll we'll see how it goes. Like, if you like it, well, I'll, I'll keep doing it. But I think it uh inspires me to keep writing, which I need for our anthology. <laughs> Ooh, tell me why I really love this. 
I absolutely love this for you. So, nestled amidst the landscape. Oh my god, see, I'm struggling too. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Nestled amidst the landscapes of Stowe, Vermont, lies a tale shrouded in mystery and ghostly whispers, the legend of Emily's Bridge. This charming New England town is renowned for its natural beauty and historic charm, and yet it holds within its embrace a story that sends shivers down the spines of locals and visitors. According to this lore, Emily's Bridge, officially known as Goldbrook Covered Bridge, earned its eerie history from a tragic love story. The tale revolves around a young woman named Emily, who is said to have been deeply in love with a man from the neighboring town. Their love was forbidden and was a secret affair hidden from the eyes of society. As whispers of their romance spread, the couple made a pact to meet one night at the bridge. However, tragedy struck when Emily's lover failed to arrive, leaving her heartbroken and alone on the misty bridge. Devastated by her lover's betrayal, Emily is said to have taken her own life, hanging herself from the, the rafters of the covered bridge. Since that ill-fated night, locals and visitors have reported the hair-raising encounters and unexplained phenomena. Some claim to have heard the mournful wails of a woman echoing through the stillness of the night, while others speak of ghostly apparitions and inexplainable cold spots. Despite numerous attempts to debunk the legend, the mystery surrounding Emily's Bridge draws in thrill-seekers and paranormal enthusiasts in hope of catching a glimpse of Emily's restless spirit or in experiencing the otherworldly presence said to linger in the air. Whether you believe in ghosts or not, the legend of Emily's Bridge serves as a reminder of the enduring power of love and the haunting echoes of the past that reverberate through the corridors of time. As night falls and moon casts its silvery glow upon the covered bridge, one can't help but wonder if Emily's spirit still wanders the wooden planks, forever searching for her lost love within the mists of Stowe, Vermont. That's it. That's my segment. That's that's um. Emily's bridge. <laughs> it's like a sadder um. version of Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I, you know what? I really, I think I do like this whole storytelling vibe. Right? It just feels fun, especially when we can't speak. If it's right for you. like you Yeah. Know? So with that being said, do you want to get us started on the tarot card of the week? Oh, shoot. I start today? Oh, I can go first. I don't um, care. Uh, yeah, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> so the card that i pulled today is the queen of wands the queen of wands is like a social butterfly and she has a lot of creative energy she's known for kindness and like good advice but she also represents that like confidence and personal power so it symbolizes a strong influential individual usually a woman sometimes it could be a man but it's typically a woman who embodies all of these traits so when she pops up, it means that good things are coming. And I think that it's really funny because the element for this card is fire, which fire is obviously an element of the sun. And since we just had a solar eclipse, it's really interesting to me to see how this creativity and confidence is going to either shift or like increase with the solar eclipse. Interesting. Bringing the solar eclipse into the game, huh? Yeah. It makes sense. Right. Um, I technically didn't pull the next card. Um, technically, Z, mm -hmm. right? Because I asked her for a number and she gave me a number and she said three. So I counted one, two, three, picked the third card of my uh, tarot deck. And I got the high priestess. <laughs> Once again, this card um, is haunting it, us. It's haunting us in in a great way. It's a good card yeah. to haunt us. Yeah. You know, we it's fine. But Chelsea, if you listen to our last episode, Chelsea actually picked this card last week. So, um, somebody's not getting the message. Basically, someone's <laughs> not getting. Someone's being a little stubborn. We have to remember to follow our gut and intuition. If something inside you is telling you to not pursue something or to pursue something um follow follow what your heart desires pretty much and also 
it's hard when we don't have full control of things, but try to remember that sometimes we have to allow things to turn out the way they're supposed to because they're supposed to turn out a certain way for whatever reason. Um, so just let things be. Uh, I don't know. Other than that, I think we're okay. We're okay, right? Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> Not the high priestess making us uh, question ourselves. <laughs> My We're supposed goodness. to be trusting our instincts, and now she has us questioning because she doesn't stop popping up. <laughs> Dude, I, yeah, like, like, is it me that's not listening? Is it you, maybe? Is it a ghosty? Or maybe, maybe Z needed it to hear this card. Mm. Like, I don't know, she did Z's the technically... problem today. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I, uh... I wouldn't put it that way, but, uh, oh, also, we didn't, we didn't do something last episode that I'd like to do this episode, if I may. Because we did somebody else last episode. Yes, thank you so much. Um, I'm so glad we're on the same page. Um, I love how you didn't even have to say anything, I just knew. Yeah. Uh, so. Speaking of Z, shout out to her. She just celebrated her uh, 30th birthday last week. Yay. You know, friends are getting old. Our friends are going to start not liking us if we keep announcing their ages to the world. <laughs> not liking us? More like not liking me, which is kind of normal. <laughs> you know, it's like everyone loves me, but like everyone hates to love me. Hate, loves to, to, hate, hate to love you, love to hate you. Exactly. Yeah, I get that. Uh, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't let me know when your birthday is and don't tell me how old you are. It's as simple as that. You already know, um, so I'm screwed on that. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's alright, because you guys will get me back on my birthday when I turn 30. <laughs> We don't record around your birthday. I know. <laughs> Loser. <laughs> Anyways. I'm gonna change that. Don't worry. I'm gonna do yeah. something I'm well, gonna do something so special for you. We did do a promo episode for this season, so who knows what we'll do for season four. Yeah. I like that. We have a lot of exciting things coming for season four, and we're only like what, eleven episodes into season three? <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Forgive me, but fuck season four. I want our book to come out already. Yeah, like I'm I so want excited. to, I like I'm I'm excited to work on. And I know I said this last episode, but I'm so excited to like continue working on them, mm -hmm. publish them, and share it. But also like, then come up with new ideas for the next one. Right, because like while we're working on this book, there's people in the background working on special things for us. Mm -hmm. So it's exciting. I'm so excited. So thank you so much for joining us this week, ghosties. We hope you enjoyed this week's episode as much as we did. If so, please make sure to give us a follow on Instagram and TikTok. We are your hosts. I'm Chelsea. And I'm Veronica. Have a spooky weekend and we'll talk to you guys next week. Bye. Bye.